I do believe that the Army uh, is beginning to recognize that you're also going to need data engineers and data scientists and, and kids that can be in my command post, you know, 20 years from now or 15 years from now and rewrite code overnight to fix a problem we're having in terms of understanding. Um, I mentioned project convergence earlier, and it, it, we're, we're working with artificial intelligence, we're working with autonomy, we're working with robotics, we're working, ro the network is not robust enough yet, but we're working with, you know, how much bandwidth we actually have to have, and we're working with smart algorithms to, so, you know, the on-device uh, computation as opposed to everything going to the cloud. We're working with sensors on the ground, uh, on vehicles, in uh, air, in the air, air breathing type sensors, and space sensors uh, to identify targets. We're using artificial intelligence to, to classify those targets, tell us what they are and exactly geolocate what, you know, where they are. We're passing all that back via SATCOM to Joint Base lewis McCord in Washington State where it's being processed by a, a unit called the I2Qs, which is an experimental part of the multi-domain task force, who is then processing that back to the fires, uh, the AFA TEDs, you know, back at Yuma Proving Ground to the shooter in rounds on, you know, launching rounds to get to target within 10, 15 seconds. Um, and so, you know, everything that I, that I, in very simplistic terms, I, I firmly believe when I look at that, that future, you know, if you want to win, you're going to have to see first, you're going to have to understand first, you're going to have to decide first, and you have to act first. And if you can do those four things faster than anybody will ever fight, um, that I think is, is how I would define the ability to win. And there's a lot more that goes into that. I mean, our people are our asymmetric advantage over any other army in the world. We have the best leaders, the best soldiers in the world. And so that's the talent management piece of it. That's why the chief says that, you know, philosophically people are his first priority um, because we got to have that talent. I mean, you can, you come up with the most exquisite technology in the world. If you don't have the talent to, to operate it, maintain it, fight it, um, you're not going to be successful. So I, I just think that in, in our, the talent management piece, we're talking uh, with HRC, uh, MNRA and the G1 right now about um, standing up a new field. Uh, merge, they, right now we're calling it emerging technology leaders. I'm really not fond of that name, but we'll come up with something better um, to capture this skill set. We're fielding a, a system called IPSA that will help us find and manage that talent because uh, right now, you know, we manage people by two variables. Uh, it's a captain of infantry or it's a sergeant of artillery, and that's about all we know about people. And so IPSA will help us, you know, with the unique skills that our people have, we can start uh, not taking advantage of it, but, you know, for the for the individual and for the Army, uh, taking advantage of that skill that you bring to the Army. So I think the Army is moving in the right direction. It's not going to happen in the next two months, uh, but all the all the pieces are there for the Army to start recognize the, the skills and the talent that, that people like data scientists, data engineers, coders, people with that type, mathematicians, I mean, scientists, that we're going to have to have a number of people like that, um, and I just think we're moving in the right direction to begin to, to, number one, recognize, and number two, reward that talent.